Hey guys, thanks for supporting the generic tech support channel. This is Tech Guy one Just wanted to thank you guys all for making this channel great. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Hey guys, welcome to a Windows 10 system. Now this system is a vanilla version of Windows 10. It has no configuration of any kind on it. It's not anything customized. There's no specialty edition. It is strictly just Windows 10. So you're probably asking yourself now, why would you want another Windows 10 vanilla edition system? I figured today we would do a little testing. Now this particular OS, we're gonna update completely up to date. Latest updates on the system with all the security patches. Basically what you would get out of the box. And then we're gonna install the ONO Shut Up 10 application on it. And we're gonna run a preliminary scan. So we're gonna scan the base version of Windows 10. We know that we're gonna get the one info, or the one medium, and then the likely the 28 infos, 24 infos, maybe more or less, it depends on Windows patches. It's possible that we'll have less infos now that we have all the patches applied. Whereas in previous, we didn't have the uh, Patch Tuesday updates from this previous week, so maybe something was fixed. Like for instance here, we have an optional quality update available for a cumulative patch from April for this particular system, which we are also gonna download and install. Okay, so once we have all the updates applied to the system, we're gonna reboot the system. When the system comes back up, we're gonna run a scan on it with our Nessus scan to get a baseline as to what the configuration shows as far as our infos, mediums, or criticals, or only God knows what else, security settings. So after we get our baseline output, we're going to install the O&O package for ShutUp10. And what that package is supposed to do is it's supposed to give you a nice, friendly GUI where you can configure your setting standards to stop ads and block Microsoft's telemetry and all the other stuff that we've done in the past in the scripting. And then I'm going to run the scan again. And we will take a look to see specifically what shows and what doesn't show. Does it actually make a difference? And does it say, or rather, does it do what it says it's going to do? After we run that scan, we're going to jump back to our base configured Windows 10 vanilla system with all the updates applied to it. And then we're gonna run the same scan again after we apply the scripting changes that we applied to our Ghost system and our x Lite system in a previous video. And we're gonna take a look at that to see what that shows in our scan results. Now I'm curious what we'll see because if the O&O works the way it's advertised to work, then we should have the same or similar results on both scans. But something tells me we're not going to have that. Okay guys, so you know I'm all about full transparency with systems, so we have our profile set with our uh, firewall disabled. Pulled up the host name of the actual machine. And we can see over here that we have the build date of today, 425, 2024, Windows 10 Pro, 22H2. Back to the system, I believe we still have the January update that's broken, but that's been something that's been broken for a while now in Windows 10. They still haven't fixed that, so not really worried about that. And the system is currently running a Nessus scan against this particular desktop, so we can get a baseline that we can use before we install our O&O software on the system to do the ShutUp 10 uh, software to see what that looks like in a scan. Now I want to point out that O&O is amazing. They've been around for a really long time. I've used their defrag utility back in the days of Windows 2000 um, when they removed the NT4 version of the defragmentation tool from Windows 2000 and Windows XP. The ONO defrag freeware was amazing. So I've known about them for a really long time. So when I found out from one of our subscribers that they made a third party piece of software called ShutUp10 to actually disable all the noise, the ads, and the other crap in the Windows operating system, I thought we definitely got to try this out. Okay, so our baseline just finished, and as you can see, Microsoft is at it again and has now made the operating system less uh, secure with the latest updates that came out in April of 2024 for Windows 10 22H2. Perhaps not surprisingly, since we are now slowly getting worse and worse in our security scans as far as our Windows operating systems are concerned with every patch that we apply to them, which, again, unfortunately, that's just the way things are these days. The, the, the patches that Microsoft used to release used to actually patch the operating systems and secure the operating systems while also providing functionality of use where the OSs were not only better after they were patched, but also 
they were more secure after they were patched. It was very rare that you ran into issues where the OS would actually get worse or that the OS would get uh, buggy after you ran the updates. Not like today. Today, it seems that Microsoft has given up where updates, when you apply them, they cause security issues, they cause problems, they cause issues, and you can't turn them off. So I can understand why a lot of people look for ways to shut off the Windows updates from the automated process because 22H2 from January didn't have the high and we only had 24 infos or 23 infos and one medium. Now we have one high, one medium, and 27 infos. And that's just, that's crazy, especially for Windows 10 with all the updates. But this is our baseline configuration for our latest patch revision in April. So we're gonna use this as our baseline for our next scan after we put the O&O software on the system. We secure the system, and then we'll run another scan to see what the, shows, the, the results show. Now this should get lower in the event that that O&O software actually does what it says it does. Okay, so this is the O&O software called ShutUp10++, which we're going to go over the configuration of this and see if we can use this to actually lock down our Windows 10 system. Now this is freeware. I'll put the link in the description, and I really hope that it does work because this software company, O&O, has been around for a real long time, and they have made some really good products. So I'm hoping that this actually does work. Now at the top of the screen, we're going to see the difference here between current user and local machine. I would actually suggest using local machine versus current user to actually lock down as much of this as you can. And then anything that you have to add in addition to the current user, you would add as a secondary thing versus the other way around because you don't want to give the system full access on other accounts. So if there's service accounts on the system, the service accounts would have full access to the system. If you're going to lock it down, I would suggest doing it from the local machine. Now, again, it may vary. There may be differences in the configuration in one versus the other. And that's probably a tie into your configuration in your registry that some of it's going to be user only. Some of it's going to be user and local machine available. So I would just use the local machine side. So let's lock this system down. And for the sake of this test, because we know we have a baseline, I'm going to lock down as much of this as possible. And you'll see over here on the top right where it says recommended, yes, and then limited. So we're going to just turn the stuff on that says recommended yes. We're going to disable as much of this as possible. Now it says limited, but the only option I get here is on and off. So I'm just going to turn it on for the things that I know for a fact that likely won't break anything. Now if you click on these things, it does give you information, submenus, so you can go through that. For the sake of this though, I don't really see a point since, again, we're going to lock down as much of this as possible. Now again, if you look in here, you can see the apps for all the different things, you know, phone, email, everything else. All this crap I don't use on our VM system, so I can just shut every single one of these things off. Okay, so I just went through the full configuration here and turned as much of this stuff on that I could. There's a couple things I left turned off. For instance, um, the activate deferring upgrades. I don't want to do that. Disable Windows updates. I don't want to do that either. If I wanted to do that, I could use the script to do that but there's really no reason for me to do that through the settings here. Ultimately, I don't know what could be reverted yet, so until we get to that point, I'm just gonna turn that stuff on through our local machine, and now I'm gonna go through the configuration based off of our user account and see what I should turn on or leave off. Okay, so I have all the stuff turned on now that I want turned on through both the user as well as the computer configuration. I don't wanna disable my smart screen. Everything else for the most part though in here is disabled. Even the stuff that they say don't do it, I still want to do it because I'm curious what it'll what will happen or what it'll show. So let's do apply all settings. I'm gonna assume that worked. Let's export this. I'm curious what our configuration file will actually show. Now, the other question is, is does it need to continue to run? I do notice that our search function bar is gone. So that's kind of cool. So I'm assuming that worked. Let's run a scan against it now and see what we see. You know what? Before we do that, full disclosure, I'm actually going to pin this to the taskbar to see if it starts up with the system. And we're going to reboot the system first. 
just because if we're making registry changes, sometimes registry changes will require a restart before they'll actually take effect. So I want to make sure that this works. I want to give it as much of a possibility of working as possible. Okay, so the system just came back up. I'm going to log into it. I'm just going to launch the O&O configuration real quick. I want to see and make sure that all the stuff that we just turned on is still running. It is. It's all still set to disabled. So what I did is I canceled out of that box. I'm just going to minimize it. I'll let it run in the background. I kind of assumed it would run in the background as a service. Uh, it's possible that we'll have to create a service structure for this actual application if this works for startup. But as it sits right now, you could open up the application and the stuff that's in there does run. Again, I'm just going to apply all settings again just to make sure. Yeah, I don't care. All right, so all settings have been applied. I'm just going to minimize that again. All right, so we still have no search. The Cortana crap is gone. So that's good news. Let's run the scan on the system now and see what we see. Okay, guys, so the scan just finished. And just to clarify our configuration, let's go into our vanilla systems first. And we're going to see 27, 1, and 1. And then we're going to go into our O and O configuration next. And we're going to see 27, 1, and 1. Which means that those changes we made on the operating system may have stopped the operating system to communicating outbound, but it hasn't changed our inbound communication port. So while it has secured it in some way, not 100%. So it hasn't made any changes to our firewall configuration, our listening port configuration, um, or the operating system uh, communication port configuration. So in other words, our UDP broadcast ports are likely stopped, but we don't have our TCP ports blocked. We don't have our TCP port connection and configuration disabled, so we're still communicating back to home. So while I do like the O&O product, and I could see from a visual or aesthetic look, it does seem to make a difference. From a security standpoint, it does little to nothing over just running the operating system straight out of the box. Now we could see that on Windows uh, 10, using the Experience 10 script, so this is a script that I ran on the actual operating system to attempt to lock it down. We see 16 infos. So ultimately, with the other operating system in our O&O test configuration, if we ran the script, we'd actually be more secure than running the O&O application. Again, this is kind of a bummer because I did like to, the idea of having O&O just as a, a GUI-based application to make these changes to secure the operating system. But as you can see, it really doesn't do much for security. All it really does is it shuts off the GUI functionality, but the backend configuration still exists in the operating system. So I guess in closing, uh, let me know if you want to see additional testing of additional software that you guys are curious about. Just throw something down in the comments if you guys have software that you want me to test, and I will gladly throw it on a base Windows 10 or Windows 11 system, and we can run tests against it to see if we see anything, either good or bad, in our actual testing configuration of the operating system. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Hope you guys have a good one.